Welcome to church. Uh, thank you to all those who put in their fun script orders a couple weeks ago that got them last week. Our next orders are due April 12th, Sunday, April 12th. Communion is next week, Easter Sunday. That's right, this is Holy Week coming up. This is Palm Sunday today. And so communion will be next week, both online, in person at Carol, and if we meet in person at Hope, uh, we're going to make that decision on Tuesday, depending upon the numbers. So, um... Stay tuned, and we'll let you know as soon as we can. Lenten Bible study, uh, just being a, on how to be a disciple, not a consumer. The last one is 9 a.m. on Zoom on Wednesday. Youth group for the St. Andrew's Carrow is tomorrow at 6.30. But there will be no Hope Youth group on Thursday, because that's our Seder meal. Now, we cannot meet in person, so for those families that want to participate, let me know. We will try and meet on Zoom to do many of the initial readings together and see each other, and then we'll eat our meals individually in our own homes safely. Then, following that next morning at 10.30 on Good Friday, there will be an in-person worship service at Guthrie Presbyterian Church. Because of the lockdown, there's limited numbers, so you need to email to reserve a part with Ruth. The email address is in the comments section uh, on this YouTube channel. Uh, there will also, though, be an online Good Friday service as well. And it'll probably be available by 6 o'clock in the morning. Carol Official Board Meeting will be meeting next Tuesday after Easter. So the Tuesday following Easter, a week from this coming Tuesday, April 6th, and then uh, Hope's meeting will be on April 7th, the next night, at 7 p.m. Most likely both meetings will be Zoom uh, as of now. Uh, the other thing is the St. Andrews Carroll will be discussing that this year is their 150th anniversary in September, and so they're hoping that as COVID settles down, they can have some celebrations this fall. The Carroll Pie Crew made and sold 103 cherry pies recently, so a thank you to all those who participated in making them, and thank you to all those who purchased them. Also, the Lambton Public Health is still trying to get COVID vaccines out to people. They are now down to people 75 and over. Uh, so you can register if you're 75 and over or pre-register and they'll let you know when you can come in. Uh, phone lines are overwhelmed, so if you could do most of your contacting by email, that would be best. Get the vaccine.ca forward slash register. So if you're 75 or older, you can start reserving spots. And if you're willing to take the AstraZeneca of um, vaccine and drive to Leamington or, Ch or Ch uh, Windsor area and you're 60 from 60 to 74 you can get the vaccine now that way again you have to go online and register for that I believe that's all the announcements so let's prepare our hearts for worship as we continue to live as your people in the middle of what seems to be the last part of this pandemic, we pray for help and wisdom. As so many people are tired of isolation, tired of not getting to see their loved ones, it is tempting to start trying to live normally now. Give us the focused attention we need to think of others and patiently hold on until we can get most everyone vaccinated. Lord, as Jesus stayed focused on his mission leading towards his death on the cross for our salvation, please help us to stay focused on staying the course and staying safe just a little bit longer. And while we don't 
always know how much longer this will take. We can wait, not knowing, because we can trust Jesus. Even as the disciples on that first Palm Sunday didn't understand what was happening and what was coming, but they trusted and obeyed and did their part. Help us to be like them, as we thank you for the blessings you have given us. Lord, we thank you for the continued vaccine rollout that is happening, for the return of flowers, birds, and warm weather to walk in, for schools and classes reopening after our local COVID-19 uh, COVID scare, for Ryan and others planning on returning to in-person school in the fall at, at post-secondary levels, and for the camp staff having a retreat, even if it is on Zoom, this weekend to help prepare for the summer. Oh God, we humans do have a habit of trying to live as we want rather than trusting you and that you know better than we do. So please forgive us for living for short-term treasures in this world rather than storing up treasures, eternal treasures in your kingdom. Lord, forgive us for these sins or any other sins or shortcomings that come to our hearts and minds which we confess to you now in silent prayers. Lord, hear our silent prayers of confession. Forgiving God, grant us peace and hope as we continue to grow in our listening and following of your beloved Son, today and every day. Amen.
It's story time. And in this Palm Sunday, we're going to think again about the beginning of Holy Week, where Jesus begins his journey towards the cross. This journey has Jesus leading himself and his disciples a place where he knows he's going, but the disciples don't know or even understand. And you know, sometimes we have to follow Jesus and listen to his teachings and even obey his teachings when we don't always fully understand why. And that's part of trusting him, having our faith in him. And so look at these pictures. The picture one is Jesus and his disciples are on their way to Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover. Now when they got near the city, Jesus sent two of his disciples saying to them, Go into the village ahead and as you enter it, you're going to find a colt tied there which no one has ever written. ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you why you're doing this, say the Lord needs it and it will be sent back here shortly. And so, the disciples went. They found the coat, colt, the young, unridden donkey, outside, tied up outside. As they untied it, the owner came and said to them, What are you doing untying that colt? And they answered, as Jesus had told them. And the people let them go. And then this next picture. When they brought the colt to Jesus, they threw their cloaks over it, and he sat on the donkey an untrained donkey. And many people spread their cloaks over their palm branches, which they cut out in the fields. They laid them down, and so they went ahead. And as they went ahead, the crowds were, were shouting and praising God. Look at this picture and see the words. Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming of kingdom of our father David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Heaven. Do you see how these people, these disciples and the crowds were praising God? Did the, did the, did the disciples know about the unridden donkey? You know, no, people cannot normally ride an untrained donkey or horse. You have to train them first. But Jesus did it. And... Can you normally just walk up and down a street and say, Oh, look, there's a donkey or a horse or a mule that I'd like, and untie it and borrow it? Of course not. But when the disciples did this and they ended up saying what Jesus told them to say, the people let them go and do it. Either a prearranged signal or something arranged. And the disciples did not know that Jesus was going to go from cheering crowds within the week, to being crucified on the Friday afterwards. But it still happened. And the lesson in the story is that Jesus knows so much more than we do. He is the Son of Man and the Son of God. He has knowledge we don't have, and so sometimes we need to listen to Him and obey Him, even if we don't understand. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, as you know more than we do, it is in following and trusting you that we find out who we are and what you want us to do as your disciples. Help us to believe and trust in you enough that we can listen to you even when we don't understand. We ask this in Jesus' strong name. Amen.
Today's scripture reading is taken from Mark chapter 11, verses 1 to 11. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and just as you enter it, you will find a colt tied there, which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, Why are you doing this? Say, The Lord needs it, and will send it back here shortly. They went and found the colt outside in the street, tied at a doorway. As they untied it, some people standing there asked, What are you doing untying the colt? They answered as Jesus had told them, and, told, and the people let them go. When they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks over it, he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, while others spread branches they had cut in the fields. Those who went ahead and those who followed shouted, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the, king, the coming kingdom of our father David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Jesus entered Jerusalem and went into the temple courts. He looked around at everything, but since it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. The next reading is taken from Matthew chapter 6, verses 19 to 24. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moths and vermin destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where moths and vermin do not destroy, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will also be. The eye is the lamp of the body. If your eyes are healthy, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eyes are unhealthy, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light within you is darkness, how great is that darkness? No one can serve two masters. Either you will hate one and love the other, or you will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve both money, God and money. And the psalm passage reading is taken from Psalm 55, verses 1 to 8. Listen to my prayer, O God. Do not ignore my plea. Hear me and answer me. My thoughts trouble me, and I am distraught. Because of what my enemy is saying, because of the threats of the wicked, for they bring down suffering on me, and assail me in their anger. My heart is in anguish within me. The terrors of death have fallen on me. Fear and trembling have beset me. Horror has overwhelmed me. I said, Oh, that I have, ha oh, that I had the wings of a dove. I would fly away to be at rest. I would flee far away and stay in the desert. I would hurry to my place of shelter far from the tempest and storm. Yeah.
Let us pray. On this Palm Sunday, God, your disciples didn't really understand what was going on, but they trusted you, and you led them through it, and you faithfully and courageously fulfilled your calling to bring us salvation. God, as we look at your faithfulness in the midst of the challenges and difficulties, give us your wisdom. Help us to trust in you and to find peace and strength and similar courage today. Amen. On this Palm Sunday 2021, it has now been over a year that I have been forced to lead online worship with limited in-person worships. Recently, when talking to a few people I've connected with online, by phone, or even in person, people are tired of this whole lockdown. We all want things to get back to something resembling normal. And I know many of you are who are watching are missing and connecting are missing connecting with important people in your lives. Grandparents, grandchildren, great-grandchildren, cousins, family, friends. We are all tired of isolating and we're tired of looking at our neighbors as possibly a way to spread this virus. And as I said to someone recently, churches tend to be huggy places and I'm really not all that huggy. I usually just endure it. But I want so much to shake hands, pass the peace of Christ in worship. And yes, I even want some old-fashioned hugs. It has been a year since I've even hugged my own mother. And despite what we all want, none of us can change the situation. However, in Jesus, I believe we can find the hope and the strength to get to the end of this COVID lockdown. If we... If I have, sorry, if I would have known back in March 2020 that we would be still isolating over a year later, I would have been very angry and sad. But you know, a wise person once told me, God rarely reveals the future to his people because we wouldn't be able to handle it, whether the good or the bad. So after this last year, I have a whole deeper appreciation for the fact that we don't always have the courage and strength to handle knowing the future. Except that, while preparing this week's message on Palm Sunday, I realized Jesus did know his future. As we begin Holy Week, and as he began at the original time many years ago, Jesus and his Heavenly Father seemed to be the only ones who knew the whole story, knew what was coming next. A betrayal by Judas, an abandonment by the rest of the disciples, torture, beatings, and a crown of thorns from Roman guards, and his torturous death on the cross, organized and instigated by the Jewish religious leaders, in cooperation with the Romans. With all of this on his mind, Jesus sent two of his disciples ahead, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and just as you enter it, you'll find a colt tied there, which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. And if anyone asks you, where you what you are doing, say to them, The Lord needs it, and will send it back here shortly. They went. They found a colt outside in the street, tied just in a doorway. And as they untied it, some of the people standing there asked, What are you doing untying that colt? And they answered, as Jesus had told them, and the people let them go. Jesus had the mental and emotional courage to continue to play his part heading towards a cross with an impressive calmness and determination. So that, let us look to Jesus to find a similar strength to get through the rest of this pandemic with a calm determination to overcome. Now when Jesus instructed his disciples to go and bring back the untrained, unbroken donkey for him to ride, it would have been common knowledge by everyone that such a crazy request is not possible. You just don't go up and ride a young donkey colt or even a young horse that doesn't belong to you and take it. So when questioned by the people around them, their answer given was, the Lord needs it and we'll send it back here shortly. It must have been some sort of secret sign or symbol or warning 
to let the people know there was a plan. And people, we human beings cannot ride untrained horses or donkeys. If you try it, you'll go for a wild ride and usually get kicked off. And yet, according to the story, Jesus did exactly that. And as they did it, many people spread their cloaks on the road. Others spread palm branches that they cut down from the trees on the road. And they went ahead and they shouted praises. Hosanna, which means save us. They said, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. They said, blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Now just as the disciples played their parts, and Jesus played his part, and God somehow made this young, untrained donkey able to be ridden, God's plan of salvation worked itself out. Each person did their part. But it was only Jesus and his Heavenly Father who really seemed to know what was going on. Folks, as we continue this year-long virus outbreak, if you feel like you're not in the know, that's because nobody's in the know. But the good news is that as disciples, we don't need to understand to be a follower of Christ. We just need to do our part, and God the Father with Jesus and the Holy Spirit they will somehow all make it work out just as the Lord God has planned. The question is, do we accept that plan, even if we don't fully know it, or do we resist it? When Jesus got arrested shortly after the Last Supper, Peter resisted God's will. He drew out his sword. He cut off the ear of the servant's high priest. According to John's Gospel, his name was Malchus. But as soon as he did it, according to Luke, Jesus said, No more of this, and he touched the man's ear, ear and healed him. And so Peter resisted, and then Jesus had to resist Peter, and with a power struggle between Peter and Jesus, well, we know who won. Jesus' will was done. And so the lesson for us is to listen and to follow Jesus, even if sometimes we don't totally understand so let us stay the course. Let us not get down and discouraged about what we're missing due to this virus outbreak. Let's just keep on keeping on because we'll soon be through it all. And the way we can motivate ourselves to get through it is to realize that Jesus, as he says in his Sermon on the Mount, calls us not to store up treasures here and now in this world, but to store up for ourselves treasures Sorry, do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and vermin destroy and where thieves break in and steal, but store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where moth and vermin do not destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Folks, Jesus wants us to trust him enough that we will give up trying to accumulate treasure and comfort and ease here in this world and in this life. In fact, Jesus so warns us against the dangers of wealth that he goes on to say, no one can serve two masters, either you love one or hate the other, and if you're devoted to one, you will despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. And so the Lord Jesus wants us to love him, and to use the money that we have to love him and to love our neighbors. So it's not that wealth or money is evil, just the love of wealth and money is evil. Money, instead, is a tool to be used to love God and the people around us. So when Jesus says, where your treasure is, there your heart will be also, he's inviting us to treasure and love, not money and wealth, but him, and to treasure the things of God's kingdom. And I believe that Jesus was calm and focused on doing his Father's will to bring about our salvation because he was laser focused on his goal. His goal was to do his Father's will and to bring about our salvation. It was Jesus' faith and trust in God the Father and in his plan that allowed his great love for us to show up as Jesus courageously walked towards the cross to endure all of its physical, emotional, and yes, even spiritual pain and suffering. You know what?
People never achieve goals they don't aim at. And so as Jesus focused his attention on the goal of bringing us salvation, he was empowered by God, the Holy Spirit, to do his part with a calm graciousness that amazes readers of all the Gospel accounts to this day. And so let us, as God's people, be very careful and choosy about what we do treasure. Not comfort and ease, not wealth in this world, but seek first God's kingdom. You see, in this next section, Jesus was teaching his disciples how to avoid worry. And you can't avoid worry by saying, don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. Because the more you think about worrying or not worrying, the more you're going to, of course, worry. So what does Jesus do? Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. And then all these other things, food, clothing, the things we need, will be given to us as well. You know, I got some really good advice back in 1991 when I first moved here and started ministry. I was told to make sure I wrote down annually some, some list of goals to make. And I was warned at the time, don't make the goals too easy or too small. Make them big, extravagant, and see what happens. And so after praying over those goals, putting them on my wall, thinking about them, looking them over, what amazed me back then and continues to amaze me is that every goal I named in that first week, that first months of ministry here, was achieved within a couple of years. And I thought I dreamed big. And so every year I still go over and look over goals, ministry goals. And we've met them. Well, not the most recent ones yet necessarily, but we've met all the ones from even a few years ago, including running summer camps, teaching our congregations to be pl places of prayer. And in fact, do you folks remember back when I had my atrial fibrillation a couple of years ago, when I needed someone to help lead worship and to do the prayers of the people? Were there people in our congregations able to do this? Yeah, there were. And so as Jesus calmly over this upcoming Holy Week walked towards the cross, so we, by trusting in Jesus and treasuring in our hearts the Lord and His kingdom and making and setting goals to grow as His people, we too can get through this last little bit of a virus outbreak. But we can get through something way harder than the virus. We can get through life with all its challenges and difficulties. So let's stay focused. In conclusion, it matters what we treasure, because what we treasure will be what we love the most. So let's choose to treasure Jesus and his stories, for doing so will shape us into the kind of men and women God wants us to be. And if we seek first his kingdom, even before seeking clothes and food, when we follow Jesus, we'll discover what we will do Everything else will be given to us as well. We will discover what we were meant to do to make money and love people and use our resources. And staying focused on the Lord and what He calls us to do will allow worry to quietly slip away unnoticed as we find more and more strength to endure hard times, even as God has led us His people. You see, God's people are always having hard times. He led Noah through a flood. He led Moses through the wilderness and the people of Israel out of slavery in Egypt. He led uh, Daniel through a lion's den, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego through a fiery furnace. He led David to overcome a giant named Goliath. Folks, if God can lead people through all those things, he can lead us through a simple virus. Let's just stay focused on him and let's pray for his help. Dear Lord, at this time in history when we're tired of this virus and the resulting isolation, please let us stay focused upon you. Store up for ourselves eternal treasures in heaven by listening to you and doing what you ask, even if we don't always understand it. And if we follow you and focus our attention on you and seek first your kingdom, then worry and fear can slowly, quietly just be reduced in the background as we learn to trust you day by day, week by week, year by year, until we grow into your men and women of faith. 
We ask this all in Jesus' strong name. Amen. Let us go to God with, for prayers. Let us pray. We thank you, Lord, for choosing to teach us through Jesus to trust and follow you and him, especially when we are in times of confusion. Please, Lord, lead us today so that we can make wise choices in times of confusion. And as we pray to you right now, we pray for a world, a world that needs your kind of love, where there's lots of frustration and tiredness over this lockdown. We pray for all those who are dealing with the virus, COVID-19, and their new strains. We pray for our country, who's had several outbreaks, and we thank you that as the number of cases seem to be stabilizing here in our county, help us to be wise. Keep our local elementary school as it is reopened safe, and please continue to have the vaccines roll out quickly so they can make a difference. We pray as well, God, that as we get nearer to the end of this virus, to help us keep on being patient and kind to our neighbors, rather than frustrated and tired. Please continue to bless our nation and all of its leaders at all levels, federally, provincially, and municipally. We especially continue to pray that you would be with your church here and all around the world. May we as your people so follow you, Jesus, that we can show and tell what it means to follow you and trust you, and how following you, even when we don't understand, is blessed. We pray for our local ministries and how they're able to keep going online. Continue to bless the youth groups and the Bible studies. We also pray that you'd be with us with our Holy Week services this week of the Seder meal and Good Friday. We also pray for those who are dealing with sicknesses. We continue to pray for Lisa and Frank and Nancy as they're all dealing with cancer. We continue to play, pray for Rob with his diabetes and its complications. We remember Ryan and thank you that he is feeling better. And we ask that you would just continue to bless him. We think of Joe from a neighboring congregation who's waiting on next steps of his treatment. 
And we continue to pray for Wade from London, who's moved over to Parkwood and will hopefully be recovering and returning home soon in the next week or so. We also pray for a young man who grew up at our church, Andrew, as he is serving with the Canadian Armed Forces in Kiev. Bless Carissa, his wife, as she stays home finishing her physio training and is missing him. We also pray for those who are facing loneliness due to these lockdowns, especially people in group homes, and help them and everyone to keep in touch with people who are on their own. Meanwhile, God, we heard some sad news this week that the family of Grace Customans is going to have to say goodbye to her as she passed away very unexpectedly this week. She had had some health issues, and God, we ask that you would bless her and her family as they celebrate and have a, a funeral mass for her uh, over in Watford on Monday. Finally, God, for any other concerns that weigh heavy upon our hearts and minds, we lift them to you now in silence. Lord, hear our silent prayers. Lord Jesus Christ, hear our prayers and answer according to your will, power, and might, we ask in Jesus' name, as we pray together the prayer that he taught us, saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.